Hello, hello. Today we are talking gumption, one of my favorite old tiny words. We're going to break down what this means, how I teach it, the framework I teach my students inside of my membership, and how this applies to your everyday regular life. Let's go. Welcome back to the Style Masterclass Podcast. I'm Judith Gatan. I'm your host. I'm a coach. I'm an author. I'm a podcaster. I'm a lawyer and your new best friend. You just didn't know it yet. All right. I want to talk about gumption. It's one of my favorite words. One of my favorite, favorite words. And in my book, How to Be a Fucking Lady, there's an entire chapter on it. But I'm going to break it down for you in a way that maybe you've never heard this particular word broken down because I use it a lot around here and I just assumed everyone was sort of on the same page as me, that we all knew what it meant. We were all talking about the same thing. But I recently talked to a group of clients who were like, yeah, so we don't know what that means. And also you use that word a lot. <laughs> so it's like, oh, perfect timing. Let's break it down. For people who are not exactly in my inner circle, in my world, I want to bring you into my world. I want to bring you into a world of gumption and moxie and some other old timey words that are actually really empowering when we break them down. So let's go. I love to talk about gumption in four parts. I think gumption is about showing initiative. It's about determination. It's about courage. It's about compassion. Dun, dun, dun. I, I just had to go there. What's so fun about teaching it as sort of a four-part framework is it lines up with these questions that you may have heard elsewhere. What should I start doing? What should I continue doing? What should I stop doing? And I've added the compassion component, which I'll break down a little bit more for you in a second here. The first question is, what should I start doing? Where could I benefit from some initiative? From taking initiative, showing initiative? Again, you're like, this is a style podcast, but we think about style expansively. How do you show up to do your work in the world? What do you want to start? What do you want to create? What do you want to do? What ripple effect and influence and impact do you want to have on generations to come? Because I dare say, if you want to have influence and impact and have a ripple effect on the greater world, guess what, friend? You could probably benefit from some gumption. And it starts with initiative. It starts with actually beginning. So many of my clients have these big, audacious goals and dreams. I like to say goals, dreams, aspirations. I got that from my theater teacher when I was younger. And what's so cool about that is they're pretty much already successful. I mean, on paper, they like have it all. They've done it all. Like, why would you want to do anything else? And being the one who's successful, triple, tenfold can feel a little lonely. So what do they do? They harbor these hopes, goals, dreams, aspirations in their heart because they don't want anyone to talk ish like, what is she starting now? What is she doing now? I have clients who are moms. They are doctors with multiple specialties. <laughs> they own side hustles, jobbies, gigs, bakeries. And we have one who just went to seminary while also being a mom, while also being a doctor, while also running a bakery, like a boss. So a lot of my clients are extremely multi-passionate and they're full of gumption. They know how to get started. So if anybody is listening to this podcast format, video format on YouTube, hey, what's up? I love you. I want this to be just a little encouragement and a gentle nudge and maybe even a push or maybe even a permission slip to get started. There's something about just beginning. There's something about making the decision to start that thing, that hope, that goal, that dream, that aspiration. Get started, love. Let's go. And if you need help along the way, I'm here. <laughs> That's why coaches exist. Let's get that initiative, that little going. And here's the thing. It doesn't have to be dramatic. I, I tell my clients all the time, let's not make dramatic pronouncements that overwhelm us and then we tire out and then nothing happens. Instead, I want to encourage you, like, what's the one thing you can do today? 
Maybe it's just even putting something on your calendar to start. Maybe it's making a phone call like, hey, can I have a coffee chat with so-and-so to get more information about what starting this thing even looks like? Maybe I'm going to put on my calendar 10 minutes of research to understand a little bit more about X, Y, or Z thing. Those are also starts. I want you to think, what's one thing I can do right now, even as she's talking, to get myself started? Women of gumption show initiative. Secondly, let's talk about determination, right? It coincides with that question, what should I continue? What am I determined to see all the way through? Women of gumption are determined to see things through, through to fruition, right? We want to see our ideas come to life. Our hopes, our dreams, the changes in the industries or organizations we're already a part of. Maybe we've already started the work and we just really need some determination to continue forward. This is all going to come down to how are you thinking about where you are currently in the project? What have you done so far? Don't discount it. Maybe you're not actually tallying up all the wins you've had thus far. <laughs> that will be your homework. If you're determined to continue, we need to do two things. We need to celebrate what we've done thus far. And we need to have a clear vision of the future. And we have to hold both really closely because life lifes and things get in the way and there's obstacles and there's challenges. And bringing your hopes, dreams, goals to fruition is not for the faint of heart. This is not a rah, rah, don't worry, once you get started, it's like magic, everything just comes together. Like that's not the reality for most people. The real talk is it's gonna take some determination to see things through. And in order to stay determined, to stay in that place where like, I'm going to see this through, we have to celebrate what we've done thus far and have a clear vision for where we're headed. Number three, courage. I love talking about courage. And not just because of the Cowardly Lion from Wizard of Oz, which is one of the greatest musical numbers. But of more import is I think that there is so much literature out there and you can read about it, that there's different types of courage. And when we talk about what do I need to start, initiative, what do I need to continue, determination, what do I need to stop, where do I need to pivot, that's going to require so much different kinds of courage. Because sometimes we have tried, we have been determined, and if we really look at the facts, the numbers, sometimes things don't work out. And it takes courage to make a decision. This is different from just quitting and fizzling out and never returning to a goal, but to actively make the decision to stop, to actively make the decision to maybe set some boundaries with some folks, to actively make the decision to say, I was wrong about that thing. I've learned new information. Here's where I'm going to pivot. Sometimes we're so apt to stop something when really all that was called for was a pivot. And it takes courage, emotional courage. It takes intellectual courage, <laughs> spiritual courage. There's all different kinds of forms of courage to make those stops, to decide to end things, to set up boundaries, to pivot when necessary, to reframe things, and to start again. That takes courage. And some of us, it's not that we haven't started. It's not that we didn't try to see things through, that we're not actively doing so. But it may be that now our initiative and our determination feels like they're running low and it's time to call in some courage and figure out is a stop needed or perhaps a pivot. And that brings me to number four, which is compassion. This so often gets left out of any sort of confidence or goal setting like talks or calls or coaching. Compassion. It's hard. This work is not for the faint of heart going after big hopes and dreams, wanting to create influence and impact for generations to come. I have a hundred year business plan. Of course, I feel intimidated and a little overwhelmed sometimes. That is so normal. Oh, how human of me. That's where compassion kicks in. But sometimes as much as I have initiative and determination to see things through, encouraged to pivot when necessary, I'm also still a human being operating in this current plane of reality, which means that sometimes I just need to be compassionate. I need to have some understanding for why something didn't work, why I may not feel up to doing things certain days, 
some compassion understanding as to like, where should I go next? And I feel so confused and who can I reach out for help? And oh wait, I actually need help. I need to ask for it. Like I can show myself compassion in a myriad of different ways while still pursuing my goal and not stopping. I think sometimes we get the idea that compassion means a full force stop, right? We're on that train and we pull that cord. We want to like bring this whole thing to a stop. Shut down all momentum, all hope, all joy, all determination, like just screech it to a halt. I don't think compassion requires that. I think we can be exquisitely compassionate, so incredibly understanding and still move forward and still decide to take action. And to know when there's the difference, when there's a forced stop called for, and when there's a slowing down called for, and when there's a pause or a pivot called for, compassion, when we really drop into it, will help guide when those different things are needed. So my friends, when I say gumption, I'm not just talking about mere confidence, darling. I'm talking about gumption in a very big and boldacious way. And I want to invite you into a world of women of gumption. I want to invite you into a world where you have influence and impact for a hundred years to come. Three generations out, they're going to be like, yo, let me tell you about my crazy auntie. She was legend or whatever the vernacular version of that is in the future, right? Whatever slang them kids are throwing around. Like, I want that for every single one of you. So whoever this reaches today, just know I'm encouraging you. I'm cheering you on. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to stop and pause. Where do I need to show some initiative? What can I do today? Where should I show a little more determination? I've started. Now it's time to continue to see things through. Where could I use some courage, some courage today? Where can I call on courage? Intellectual courage, emotional courage, all the different facets of courage. Does that mean I need to stop? Do I need to pivot? Do I need to reframe? What is courage calling me into today? And then last, compassion. Lots of compassion and understanding. It's okay if things don't work out perfectly according to plan. That's why compassion is an important part of this equation. Women of gumption show initiative. <laughs> They're determined to see things through. They are courageous and they are also compassionate. If you know a woman of gumption who would benefit from this podcast episode, subscribe, like, comment. That's how other people find us. Rate us in iTunes. We love to see those. And if more important, just send us along to a friend who you think would benefit. Until next week, we are out.